Okay, then the floor is yours. Yeah, sorry, I I just have some people walking around in the background, so I'm just I'm gonna I'm not gonna turn on camera for today. If that's okay. 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 <clears throat> Okay, so this paper uh, is well, it's titled Cardiovascular Disease in the Developing World and its Cost-Effective Management. Um, yep, so it basically just focuses on the, uh, well, th this paper refers to it as the epidemiological transition uh, from the, like, the greatest cause of death being not cardiovascular disease to suddenly becoming cardiovascular disease basically over the course of one century. Um, and this paper uh, talks mostly about developing countries and how they are most impacted as they usually are with such things. Um, they also compare regional burdens and they try to investigate the reason for the uh, transition. Um, there is also a section later that reviews the economic burden, which I must admit, I only understood the general idea, I, there were some specifics that I, I couldn't quite figure out, um, but I was ready too deep to give up on this. Um, anyways, uh, they also look at the cost effectiveness of certain interventions. Um, and just for reference, uh, the developing regions that we will be discussing about will be uh, East Asia, the Pacific, Europe, Central Asia, Latin America, East, uh, Middle East, North, America, North Africa, and South Asia. Um, if you work with Dr. C, you probably know what this is. This is IHME, or sorry, this is the this is the global burden of disease like uh, visual tool, uh, but it's from IHME. Um, and basically, this diagram here, I've set it to deaths. It basically just shows uh, what conditions are the most impactful uh, in terms of deaths. And you can see here, IHD or ischemic heart disease or CVD uh, is the most influential by a quite a wide margin. Okay, um, so the epidemiological, epidemiological transition uh, due to industrial and technological advances, uh, economic and social transformations, uh, we can surmise that uh, these are the reasons for the cause of the, the transition. Um, so for example, from infectious diseases and malnutrition being the leading causes of death to now cardiovascular diseases and cancer, um, you know, like, uh, from moving from a very agrarian, like, manual labor-based uh, agrarian society to much more industrialized, improved uh, malnutrition, but as a result of, you know, for example, pesticides, uh, you, we see an increase in cancer. This is just an example. Um, there is an author they reference in this paper that cites three basic ages and then a fourth author that adds a fourth stage. Uh, these stages are pestilence, famine, pestilence and famine, receding pandemics, uh, degenerative and man-made diseases, and delayed degenerative diseases. Unfortunately, the paper does not go into specifics like what eras this, these are in like the, in human history. So we'll just have to extrapolate based on this table. Um, but pestilence and famine, well, uh, it's it's the start. So malnutrition and infectious diseases. Um, your average life expectancy was 35 years. Uh, the common form of cardiovascular disease at the time would have been RHD or cardiomyopathy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not too sure what these are, but if you know, good job. Um, and then percentage of deaths due to cardiovascular disease, five to 10%. And percentage of the world's population in this stage is 11%. So these regions like Sub-Saharan Africa, um, and other, uh, says here, excluding high income regions. So this is like much older in human history towards like the start of human civilization basically. Um, yeah. And then you have receding pandemics uh, where you see an improvement in nutrition um, and then some changes in the dominant form of CVD, increase in life expectancy, uh, but also increase in percentage of deaths due to cardiovascular disease, so on and so forth. Those are the regions. And then you have degenerative and man-made diseases. Uh, here you have increased fat and caloric intake. So this is referring to uh, obesity. 
um, and why widespread tobacco use, chronic disease deaths, etc. Blah, 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 whatever. Uh, you have an increase in life expectancy, but again, an increase in uh, percentage of deaths due to cardiovascular diseases. Um, the percentage of world's population has uh, stayed roughly the same right here. Um, in fact, you see it go down later on as we move on to delayed degenerative diseases. Um, but the percentage of deaths and life expectancy continue to increase. Uh, and then the last one, delayed degenerative diseases, uh, cardiovascular disease and cancer are leading causes of morbidity and mortality. Uh, prevention and avo treatment avoids deaths and delays onset adjust adjusted CVD declines. Um, so you can see that from the beginning, compared from the beginning to now, um, the basically the primary cause of death has completely inverted. Um, we also see a much higher life expectancy and also a much higher percentage of death due to uh, CVD. Um, yeah. Let's see, okay. So most regions uh, follow a pattern which you see an increase in stroke first, which, and then followed by uh, coronary heart disease, which this paper refers to as CHD. Uh, an increase in CHD, uh, you see a 120% increase in women uh, versus a 137% increase in men. And again, sorry, this is referring to developing regions. And now compared to developed regions, you have an increase in 30% for women and 60% for men. And then, uh, oh yeah, uh, within specific, specific regions, the author also notes uh, there are there is like a geographical uh, geographical gradient. So comparison, like northern China has a higher rate of CVD compared to southern China, and then within northern and central Asia, you have a well, basically two times uh, the number of deaths compared to other uh, developed regions within. Uh, the overall trend. Uh, appears to be which uh, appears to be an increase in econo economic wealth, uh, which is proportional to an increase in uh, total cardiovascular disease rates. Uh, this is just a graphic percentage of total deaths. Uh, in comparison, you see the different bars. Red is cardiovascular disease. Then you have malignant neoplasms. Not gonna lie, I don't know what that is. Uh, then you have injuries, not too far behind, respiratory infections, chronic lung diseases, and HIV AIDS. Um, the authors do note that uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is a bit of an exception in the progression of uh, like transition in, in the progression of the transition, where most places see an increase in stroke first and then goes into cardiovascular disease. For Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, they're still in the transition from HIV. And they're projecting that uh, following HIV, the leading cause of death will be CVD. Uh, and then they talk about the socioeconomic impact and the cost effectiveness of certain interventions. Um, so obviously this affects the national health systems and the, econo and the economies um, simply by, well, having to spend more in order to uh, treat CVD and CVD related diseases. Um, and CVD burden in uh, developing regions more to, more commonly affect uh, working age adults. So, well, naturally, the this would affect the uh, economic growth. This was an interesting number here. I feel like I need to double check this from somewhere, but I'm not. I I can't really find anything. Um, basically, they just said that an estimation from uh, five developing nations project a 20 million, 21 million years of future productive life, life to be lost to CVD each year. Uh, seems like a pretty crazy number. Um, I'm not so sure, they didn't elaborate on this. I'm not so sure how accurate this is, unfortunately. Um, and as for cost effectiveness, uh, basically they just say that there are many in interventions that have already been proven effective, but none that have been either none that have been uh, tested exclusively in developing nations or are in uh, or are in very limited availability in these again these developing nations. <clears throat> um, so because of this lack of data, they attempt to extrapolate cost effectiveness ratios. 
And then this is where I start to get confused because I don't fully understand these graphs, these tables, sorry, there's three of them. Um, so they talk about medical therapy for AMI compared with baseline of number of treatments, uh, where dollars per QALI, uh, QALY stands for cost per quality adjusted life year. Um, this is what I hope to uh, ask Dr. Sue about, but I kind of ran out, out of time. Anyways, if you want to look this, you can look at it later. Um, so basically, the, uh, we see a two times increase in the amount of deaths attributed to uh, cardiovascular diseases in developing regions. Um, and these can be mostly attributed to conventional risk factors, uh, which the authors consider conventional as in like diet, tobacco use, uh, stuff like that. Um, they also state that uh, population targeted interventions are projected to save medical and or direct costs. Uh, they will improve quality of life and productivity. Uh, so what they mean here is that many economies focus, prefer to focus on like treatment of CBD as opposed to like prevention, for example. Um, and this is actually kind of one of the biggest premises of public health uh, where we, we focus on upstream interventions over downstream. And the author basically here is saying uh, upstream interventions will uh, save a lot more money as opposed to downstream. Okay. Um, they also say advanced treatments are only available in developed nations. Uh, these should be uh, these should be a big focus to move them towards uh, developing nations to well to improve their status. Uh, even though upstream interventions are important, uh, you can't really ignore everybody else that already has these conditions. So. Yeah, that's all. That's great. Uh, so maybe uh, Simon, if you reshare your screen and then we can uh, revisit several concepts. Uh, this is a paper based upon the global burden of disease. For global burden of disease, uh, the Gates Commission has been investing for around 20 years and then I think uh, each round for 10 years is maybe around $270 million US dollars um, for the estimations. And then um, quality, standing for quality of just the life years. Uh, for example, for a person who is 70 years old, and then between 50 and 70 years old because of uh, disability, and then each year left maybe it will be discounted, say, towards half a year. And that's why, so between 50 and 70, it will only count as the 10 year of the quality, like quality adjusted life years. So for this person, uh, even though he's 70 years old, but in terms of quality, it will be 60 years after adjusting for quality. And that is the overall concept. And then the concept has been used uh, in the UK for setting up their benefit package. Uh, so for instance, like for any of the intervention, uh, whether you will be included or excluded in the insurance benefit uh, is determined by the CEA, cost effectiveness analysis. And um, for any of the single quality gained, uh, there will be also the associated the estimation about the cost. So that's why here uh, in the table, that would be the dollar sign over quality as one of the specific measure. And then uh, for the global freedom disease, uh, they developed a sister <laughs> measure. It's called a DALI, standing for disability adjusted life years. It's just uh, the opposite to quality. And then the concept is very similar. So if we are thinking about full health and then quality is measuring the healthy part and the daily is measuring the unhealthy part or a related disease and a death um, or saying like morbidity and mortality. Simon, is that helpful? Uh, yeah, now that, well, so quality is the opposite of daily then. Makes sense. I, I'm not so sure why I didn't think of that, but 
Uh, yeah, because um, daddy, daddy is called like a disability adjustment. Yeah, right? disability adjustment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's a kind of like taking into account both morbidity uh, in terms of a disability as well as mortality in terms of death. Okay. Yeah, uh, so Jean also read another paper and presented <laughs> a while ago in the summer. Uh, yeah, so that's how uh, things are connected because it's based upon the same uh, concept and uh, terminology. And then uh, for uh, the prior slide, uh, while you had a doubt regarding the estimation, I think it's worth it to specify, like for those five deriving countries, uh, which countries were included in their analysis. And then there's the concept of um, like the productive year lost, right? So that's like part of, um, we, we can say that that's part of DALI. And then for DALI, uh, I can put uh, the overall uh, equation uh, in the chat. Oh, um, one sec. Um, okay. Um, and in Delhi, there was, uh, will be like one, which is uh, like the YLL standing for year of life lost. And then YLD standing for years lost to disability. So for the concept here, uh, that was really measuring about YLL. And then specifically, it was only measuring about the productive year lost, right? Uh, so. Uh, Simon, if you want to understand a little bit further, it would be great first uh, to understand about like which deriving countries were included in the estimation. And then uh, the 21 million years uh, of future productive year lost uh, <laughs> due to CVD or attributable to CVD. So uh, you can also make specific cases. For instance, in China, it will be 3.5 billion uh, population. And then uh, we also have the understanding about CBD incidents, right? Oh, uh, so not 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 per person. Oh my God, sorry. <laughs> I just I just had a never mind. I got it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, for some reason, I was I was trying to think of this per uh per individual. I know 20, 21 million years. That literally doesn't make sense. But okay, no, I got it. Thank you. Uh huh. Great. And then if you go to those uh three tables, I think it's worth it to kind of uh il uh illustrate like the table head and uh, the key message uh, from the, these tables as well. Could you maybe uh, reorientate towards um, the slides that you show the tables? Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, so the thing's called the ICER. ICER standing for incremental cost effectiveness ratio. In thinking about if we have a little bit of marginal uh, money to be invested, and then what would you like to invest? So that's the concept of ICER. Uh, it's different from the C C E R, like for cost effective ratio, that's the ratio on average. But for the incremental C E R, that's thinking about like if we have additional investment for X, and then what would be the additional cost as well as the additional effectiveness in terms of the health gain, or say in quality or in the sense of daddy. And then here is the presentation of uh, the, like uh, the first column are the regions, and then we can compare um, between different regions, as well as like uh, the two big um, column, column uh, those two columns, that would be, uh, okay, so that's the medical therapy for AMR. AMI uh, compared with the baseline, which is no treatment, and then also like uh, another treatment, right? Mm. So here we will see that um, for the higher value, that means for the average quality gain, uh, it will be more expensive. For instance, like uh, actually here we need to also know uh, like for those uh, acronyms, they have the uh, Specific, uh, specific indication uh, in the notes that you will know like which specific medicine they are referring to. So uh, for instance, if we take a look at uh, the 
uh, sub-Saharan African countries or in that region. And then we'll see that like for the ASA, BBSK, uh, it's super expensive, right? Um, and the compare against the local three, maybe like ASA alone uh, seems to be the most the cost effective one to go. But I'm also a little bit confused by the last one, like the, is that because of the TPA are super expensive? And that's why the number has been jumping like from aspiring <laughs> very uh, low cost towards something like super expensive. So this is how exactly to read the table. And then, um, so uh, I want to specify that like for the cost of saving one, which means that uh, compare against no treatment, uh, by introducing the treatment, actually there is a uh, cost saved or say the dollar sign would be negative uh, in this case. Uh, so that means uh, actually the ASA and the BB, that column seems to be one of the best options uh, if we are thinking about the medical therapy and uh, the uh, CABG for the IHD uh, compared to no treatment. So uh, yeah, that's like how to read this table. And then uh, any comments or questions? Just a quick comment on the TPA. I, I, I looked it up uh, really mm -hmm. quickly and it does seem to be the most expensive factor. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Uh, and then maybe we can move to the second table, uh, another table. You had uh, three tables, and uh, it seems that I said, oh, I said, it's the same thing uh, because this is a continued table, and then the same way to read the results. Um, okay, the next one. This is a sensitivity analysis. So usually we will yield uh, the main results and want to conduct the sensitivity analysis to understand about either a range or like here is presented as a range, right? Uh, so that's the effect of time to treatment uh, and the age on the use of something. Um, so here you'll see that like uh, in terms of the dollar per quality, uh, so they offer the range and then also specify by age group. So usually that's like the way to present um, for different age groups, uh, the value would be slightly different. For example, here, uh, in terms of the time to treatment, it seems that for treating the younger patients, uh, it's less costly. And then in terms of the implication, it will be in favor of children. And then um, age, oh, so that's the, yeah, okay. And then, sorry, um, I should take that back. So uh, the second one would be like, um, the age and achievement. And then for the younger patients, uh, it's less costly. So it's a kind of like uh, in favor of the younger patients, um, younger than 75 years old. And then the first uh, uh, set, that's about the time to treatment. I think that might be years, um, but I don't know specifically. Usually it should be years. Or oh, month us, <laughs> probably. Uh, and then it seems that like the shorter duration seems to be uh, like more cost effective or less expensive. So that's how to interpret, interpret the table. Okay, so I think we covered all the three tables, right? Uh, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. And then it's very interesting to think about like the uh, risk factors. If you go to the bar chart, uh, for HIV AIDS, um, that's starting from the 1980s. Uh, as the uh, infectious disease uh, as the leading cause of death uh, in sub-Saharan African countries. However, actually patients are not exactly die from HIV. Mm, for example, like uh, tuberculosis is one of the major driver risk factor uh, for the death among the HIV AIDS patients. So, that's something like quite interesting to think about comorbidity or say the HIV AIDS patients are more vulnerable than the general population uh, to TB infection. So that's the situation. And the uh, overall CVD is a kind of like the disease of um, wealth. 
um, but there are several exceptions. For example, for rheumatoid heart disease, uh, that's the disease of poverty, because uh, if it's more, uh, it's, if it's a worse living condition, if there are more people in the uh, same uh, living, uh, the, in the same bedroom, and actually for rheumatoid heart disease, the infection rate would be higher. And also um, all the studies show that for the low income families, uh, they are more likely to uh, be impacted by RHD in terms of infection, as well as a secondary prevention. So for our team, we have been working on those uh, diseases, uh, which are kind of like the disease of poverty, including RHD in Uganda. And uh, currently we are wo also working on uh, CVD prevention, cardiovascular disease prevention in the United States, uh, try to address about high sodium intake because around the world, um, China, Japan, and the United States are the three countries with the highest burden of CBD as well as the highest sodium intake at the population level. So that would be the key message um, from today. And then um, we about to close the meeting. Any other questions or comments regarding the presentation by Simon? Simon, wonderful job. Thanks, I should have asked earlier, but uh, oh well, I guess. Oh, do you have any additional questions? Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I was just referring to the, uh, the three tables. Okay, cool. Yeah.